Welcome to Extra Time here from SLT Munich. We are down in transition and we have just witnessed some of the most incredible racing, especially in the men's race, but also in the women's. Georgia Taylor-Brown was supreme in the first swim, bike and run and then just held on with such composure. But that men's race, the last five athletes standing after such a difficult enduro really went at it. All the teams represented and Matt Hauser in the end was just too good. And we're going to go over and talk to him right now. He's surrounded by the rest of his Eagles teammates. So we'll just see if we can get in here. Not that you guys aren't all important, Important, but I'd like to speak to the big man first. Hey, I got my pack around me. Come on. That's it. You got your eagles. Pa I don't know what's a group of eagles called. A uh, flock. A flock of eagles. I don't know. <laughs> That's a very Australian <laughs> answer, mate. Um, I know you were interviewed just at the end of the the telecast. Now we're in the extra time show. Having had five minutes to really, you know, think about that, that was another insanely good performance. Yeah, it's five minutes of shivering after that champagne shower. I think, mate, it's <laughs> bloody cold out here in Munich. But yeah, I mean, the uh, the belief is just settling in. I think. I think I. I really am in good shape and this showed it out there today. I was put under the pump in the second race. Didn't do myself any favours, but uh, I managed to battle it out and a few fighting words from my teammates on the sidelines really, really pushed me through. I think belief is a big part of it because we talked last week after and I said, oh, you, you got second, but you're unfairly penalised, but you managed to find your way back through. You're angry, you take a lot of belief. You take it into this week, you do it again, you give yourself work to do. The belief again to go into this week with all that momentum. Yeah, exactly right. And I've got such a great team team around me. I had Vic shout out to me on the uh, on the on the way into that last swim, strong swim, last swim, Maddie. Let's let's put in. And uh, I really uh, fed off those words of encouragement and uh, and put it in. Uh, kept my head in, head in the game. I looked a bit shaky there, but um, yeah, I knew that. You know, if I'm in a, in with a shot to beat Hayden, I really got to take that opportunity with both hands. And it's not every day you beat that that guy as a class athlete and Vasco up there as well. So um, yeah, I just knew I had to take my opportunity there and. Uh, today was the day to do it. Your third swim was insane. You swam up to that, but you said you stayed in control. Now, the first two swims, you only managed the ninth fastest time overall. So what happened? I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's, everyone was just on, you know, and it's just it's about staying in the game. Um, I guess one little lapse of concentration or one little ease off the, uh, off the accelerator can really hurt you. And uh, I know it's something that I've got to look back on and, uh, and, and really tweak, but uh, I, I managed to work my way through it. I know the Enduro was going to be all about, uh, you know, outlasting the rest of the athletes and the rest of the competition. So uh, I did that. So mm. You've taken us, on, taken us on a real emotional journey the last two weeks. I mean, it's, uh, to be you must be tough emotionally to go through all those highs and lows. <laughs> I'm not doing my girlfriend any favour either. She's probably on the uh, on the sidelines worrying. Uh, she said I was. She was a bit worried with me on the uh, on the second leg. But yeah, I mean, didn't want to make things boring, right? You know, being at the top all the time is a bit boring. So I wouldn't. Is it? I've never been. There. I don't know. What's it like? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's hell of a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, no, it's. Uh, I oh, know, so good to be up there, mate. And uh, you look cold, mate. Oh, let, let's stop mate, this shivering. here. I'm right, shivering. Come here, come here. <laughs> Thanks. It's all right. Nice it's all right. Cuddle. We'll head good over love, to Vicky mate. Holland right now. But how about this? The winner, thirty-five thousand bucks. Oh, and he smells like champagne too in the last two weeks, Vicky. What a way to be smelling champagne, hey? So I'm here with Sean Rainsley, who we know has a really tough day in London last week with that crush so early on in the bike. You must be feeling pleased with a bit of redemption today. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, last week probably couldn't have gone any worse, 80 metres into the bike in a crash. Um, so, yeah, to be in the mix for the first two-thirds of the race and be right up there with the World Series medalist was really cool. We also saw you steal that first short shoot. You really went for it through transition, didn't you? Yeah, well, scorpions seem to be getting them all, so I thought, actually, eagles are going to get one today. So up those stairs, I just went as hard as I could, and, yeah, it paid off. <laughs> yeah, Tim would have been delighted, I'm sure, yeah. to see one of his eagles taking a short shoot for the women. So we did see that, like you said, you were... You were doing so well. You were right up there with Taylor Spivey, Sophie Coldwell, yeah. hunting down Georgia Taylor-Brown. Yeah. Did you maybe just run out of steam a little bit on that final round? Yeah, well, if I'm honest, just getting in and out of the cold water, my breathing went, um, and then I felt like I was breathing like a pug, really. <laughs> so I knew it was going to be a bit of a struggle once I got on the run, and then I had a big chase group just chase me down. Um, but no, compared to last week, I'm going the right way, so, yeah, really happy. Oh, so what are we going to see in Malibu? I mean, this trajectory who knows I mean yeah hopefully I can stay in the mix even longer so yeah I'll keep swimming as hard as I can and getting in the race and yeah you never know what can happen then uh, well good luck for next week Sean and for now we're going to go back over to William McCloy well that's very formal thank you very much Victoria Holland Davy. and I'm standing here by myself because I went to go and interview Johnny Brownlee and Annie Emerson said I'm British do not let anyone but me interview Johnny Brownlee so now we hand over to Anna Lee Emerson and Jonathan Brownlee 
Well, I know, I'm glad you like, uh, you know your place here at Super League. Johnny, um, I want to say disappointing, but it's not. You've gone one place better than in London, but you've gone through a hell of a lot over the last few months to get here and to be in the shape that you are currently in, which is not bad. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, torn at the moment, I guess. Uh, like Lots of athletes have gone through what I've gone through, you know. I'm getting better, I realise that. I, uh, I like to come to a race like this and obviously try and get the podium and I thought this was going to suit me today and uh, I was so close. But the second side of that is I've got to remind myself that, uh, you know, I've only started swimming four weeks ago and I was uh, in a cast in my, in my, with my scaphoid uh, getting protected four weeks ago. So to be able to fly around corners and uh, be at the top level of sport, is, I'm happy with that. What does it feel like to be on the bike again? You look a little bit cautious. You're not quite the Johnny that we know on the bike at the moment. No, I, I'm definitely not. I, um, there's a couple of reasons for that uh, today. And first one, the big one, is I literally have been out riding outside for, for five weeks. I did a week in a pot, which I probably shouldn't have done riding outside, and then uh, four weeks of uh, without my cast on. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I, I have la- la- I'm lacking that confidence. You know, when you've come off your bike, it does take a while, and the best thing we say to all athletes that do crash your bike is get straight back on your bike. But the problem I had is I had eight weeks when I couldn't do that. So uh, that takes a bit of getting the confidence back, but I definitely am getting there. You know, this is hard as it gets. It's super it's, it, it, the The course is slippery, it's tight. So if I can do it in this environment, I can do it anywhere. Well, Johnny, we were calling you for the win in round two of this leg, but Matt Hauser, wow, w- w- what have you got on his performance? Because that was something incredible. We thought he was well out of the podium positions. Yeah, to honestly, I thought he was out of the podium as well. Uh, I'd have to go back and watch it, but I imagine he got back in in the, the third round on the swim. He did a really good job there. But to honestly, the run was really impressive, and that the most impressive bit of his race. I, he just seemed to have another gear. I was telling myself that he was the one who was going to slow down after the first lap, but... He just took off, and you know Matt's an incredible athlete. Uh, I think he's got the strength. You know, he's a big, strong lad. He's got that speed, and I think now finally he's got the endurance to be able to use that. And uh, this format really suits him, and he was really impressive today. Well, there you go. That was at Johnny Brownlee. Let's just remember three times Olympic medalist. Back to you, Will McCoy. Thank you very much, Annie. I was just too busy chatting with these boys. I nearly missed the uh, the, the throw over to me, but I've got the rest of the podium here behind Matt Hauser and um, plenty of uh, discussion points. And I'm going to start with the fact that Hayden's about to leave. He's already got the, he's already got his bag. I don't know what's in there, mate. I mean, you, you look like you're about to head to Malibu right now. Well, 100%, you know, getting ready. I've uh, got to get, stay focused and get ready to Malibu, you know. Just got to pack up and off we tote. But, um, no, literally when you pack like a gypsy, you, you've got nothing. So um, That's it? That's all you've got there? That's literally... I've, this I went to your room, man. It is full of junk. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with all that stuff? Oh, the, the parents are here of my girlfriend, so they need to take all my stuff back. So this is why I've got all my stuff ready to go, and they can, I can dump some stuff off of that house and uh, have as less weight as possible on that Malibu flight because we've got weight restrictions, baby. That is true, but you're probably up the very pointy end, so it's a weight restriction of 50 kilograms or something. I wouldn't know. But the Lego, yeah, Vasco, you brought it up. All week long, Hayden's been making this Lego Land Cruiser. Where's that going? It looks super complicated. It's extremely complicated, but it's going back to Belgium, and uh, it's got to sit right on top of the table in front of the TV. It's going to look great. Pride of place. And the medals, medals, like above the medals? 100%, yeah. That was more mental capacity than the the hour of racing. That that stuff was like three days of mental work, you know. It was great. Great for the mind. So you've dropped off uh, a house that takes a one-point championship lead. Uh, But you, my friend, have just rocketed up the standings. And the reason is you used your own bike this time. So much easier. I mean, what a, what a difference. So much easier to have my own bike, with my own gears, with the brakes on the right side. I mean, it's not easy riding on a UK bike. You must be extremely happy, though, to be able to put that performance together after not being able to show your best uh, in London. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, in London, I, I think I was in pretty good shape, but things didn't turn out my way. Uh, just kind of took everything that went bad and tried to fix it to, to this race. And I mean, I have a lot of points to catch up, uh, catch up on for the series, so... Very happy with the second place. How about you, mate? You're gonna you're gonna basically have this five race long series battle with the Australian. Yeah, it's gonna be great. You know, it's, it's all about being consistent and uh, another podium. I think it's only you know like a point behind now, so it's um I'm I'm fine with that. And um, you know, not having the best day for me, but just getting beaten by the two better athletes on the day. You know, that's what the Super League racing is all about. If you're one percent off, um, you got to pay for it, and that's what I did today, and just got beaten by the other other two better athletes on the day. I'm- I'm going to let you guys go because I can count six Red Bull logos and I'm getting thirsty, so we're going to head over to Vicky Holland right now who's with Taylor Spivey. 
Thanks, Will. Yes, I am with Taylor, who has done two podium performances in the last two weekends. You're very consistent at the moment. You're enjoying being back on the Super League circuit. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun this year, and I think, you know, consistent podiums help, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. De definitely. I think something that we've spoken about a lot in commentary with you is that you're really good at the tactical stuff and the technical elements of transition, because transition in Super League is like nothing else. Oh, my gosh. If you haven't done it before, I think... You really learn as you go, but fortunately, I've done it for quite a few years now, so I've like figured out the intricacies, and it's definitely paid off. Yeah, you are quite the veteran of Super League, and you're showing those other girls really like how to go through transition as fast as you do. The tactical side of it has been perfection so far. And if we look ahead to next week, we're going back to your homeland. You must be excited about that, you, where you grew up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's only an hour away from where I grew up, so I'm really excited. My family will be there and friends. But um, last year, I was, you know, not very good. So I'm hoping for some redemption this weekend, next weekend. <laughs> last week, though, last year, sorry, in Malibu, not quite well, I think. Seems to remember there was a little bit of illness going around the group as a whole. And there were some people, you know, struggling a little bit. So a bit, bit of better health this year might go into play into your hands. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. I feel like we're all taking a bit better care of ourselves. And, um, yeah, we're going into this race less tired. So... Hopefully it pays off. <laughs> well, hopefully your home advantage, your surf skills really come into play next weekend and we will see you in Malibu. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, I'll just pick up, see if Vicky doesn't throw to me anymore. We're here in front of the Boa Endura recovery area and we've got three of the team managers and we're going to start with the, the leading team manager who was a lot more cocky about an hour ago than you are now because it's tightened up considerably in the team leaderboard. Oh, without question, you know, going through the results and seeing the importance of scoring on the individual disciplines, it shows that it's important. Our men were average today, you know, it was, uh, it was tough racing. And, but, you know, full credit to Cassandra Bogran. She struggled after the crash yesterday. She went after individual points. She thought like a team player. We're still in the lead, but that gap has been closed dramatically. Can she come back, though, from a performance like that on the bike, or did she just put that, in the, put that to bed and it's dry in Malibu and we go back to normal programming? Well, the talent's there. It's, it's, it's about handling the obstacles that present on, on, on race day. She's, she's, a, she's a great talent, but you need to get through this. If she wants to win Paris and, and, and go on to Olympic glory, she has, needs to learn how to deal with these sort of things. And this is what Super League Racing gives to her. Annie, uh, the cheaters, they went from third, uh, fifth to third and they, they tasted the podium there for a second and they went pfft, straight back down to fifth. What do you feel? Well, I think we're struggling a little bit with our men. They're not delivering. I think Johnny Brownlee was, he's getting there for sure. You know, he's had a difficult time, you know, as we were talking with him just five minutes ago, you know, coming back, the confidence um, is really lacking. And of course, you know, he's missed so much training. So expect Johnny to be back up there. Um, I'd like to see Max Stapley as well. So I think that on the whole, um, the men um, are going to improve. The women did brilliantly today. All right, what about you, TD? You're finding the going a little bit tougher in uh, 2022 than you did in 2021. It's because you taught these people how to do this thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm all for, you know, I think knowledge is power, but I think absolute power is sharing your knowledge. So you can thank, <laughs> you can thank me later, um, ladies and gentlemen. But no, I mean, listen, the team rallied today. You know, we had a tough week last week. There were lots of people down in the dumps from the Eagles and they turned up yesterday and it rained. A few of my boys fell off. You know, the women were worried about the technicality of the course. So, yeah, um, we're still in it. We're fighting for every race. Bring on Malibu. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be a fantastic race in Malibu, as we saw last year. It changes everything being in that short dump over there. Thank you to all of you. We can't wait to see you there. We can't wait to see you there either. Do not miss it. It's next weekend. In the meantime, everything's on superleaguetriathlon.com.